Okay, so welcome back. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about my view of some really important best practices to be thinking about when you're writing C Sharp or any other code. And this is particularly from an engineering background where you deal with a lot of data and you need to make sure that your data is correct and accurate. And my number one top recommendation of best practice is to never ever assume your data is good, right? Always double check and verify your data at every step of the process. To me, that is number one. And I'm going to use as an example, a C-sharp application we just developed in the previous videos, where we are gathering data uh, from the USB port from our Arduino, and we are basically just logging that data every half second or one second or five seconds or whatever. We're going to log that data to a chart. We're going to use that as an example of how you might want to double check your data to make sure that it's okay. Now, I encourage you to look at the previous videos in this playlist where we talk about data acquisition and how we designed our Arduino data acquisition system. But here's kind of in a nutshell, here's what we're doing. We've got our Arduino and it is grabbing samples, sending it over the USB to a computer. And it's going through basically three phases of the process to get data so that we can plot it. And um, we're starting out with getting a string with a time value and a sample value and some carriage return numbers. And then we're trimming that string and parsing it to get a couple ints. And then we are processing that further to get some actual time and value numbers. So my recommendation is, and um, this um, Arduino logger is a great example, and we'll go through why it's a great example, um, of wanting to verify at every step, okay, what did I receive? What was the result of trimming it and parsing it? Did I get what I expected? What was the uh, result of going through this processing to get the actual numbers? Did I get what I expect? So we're going to take a look and see how we can employ some very, very simple methods to check the data and make sure you're getting what you expect. Okay, so I've taken the code we wrote in the last um, video where we developed a C-Sharp Windows Forms application and we added functionality so we could log data, basically grab data every half second or one second or five seconds or whatever from our Arduino over the USB port and we will chart it, put it on a chart in this Windows Forms application. So um, again, I just copied and pasted much of the code. So as before, I'm gonna start by opening the port and the port is successfully open, and now I'm going to start logging data. And here's our chart. You can see it updates in real time. It's got one second, two seconds, three seconds worth of data. And I'm basically feeding the Arduino a one hertz, one cycle per second sinusoidal waveform, and um, it's plotting it in real time. Okay, so now I've come back about an hour later, and I'm going to run this again and see what I get. So I'm opening the port, port is successfully open. I'm gonna hit log and I'm logging data. And if you look here, wait a minute, this says 60 seconds, 80 seconds, 100 seconds. Uh, that's not right. Something's wrong with the scaling here. How come suddenly it's not working? Well, as I said, there's three phases to this and clearly something's not right now. So what I've done and what I recommend you do is I have put in a text box. I always put in a text box when I write code just for debugging and outputting data. And I've also put in three check boxes. And these three check boxes allow me to check, uh, do I want the original input string from the Arduino to be printed out so I can see if that's legit? Or after it's taken that and parsed it into a couple of ints, do I want to see that? Or in the final phase, when I've converted to two actual doubles, where I've got an actual time and an actual value as doubles or floats, which one do I want to see? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the input string. So you can see the input string, yeah, I've got the big integer, which is microseconds, since you powered on the Arduino. 
that looks fairly legit, right? And then I've got comma, and I've got the um, sample value from 0 to 1023. That looks legit, right? Now let's look at once it takes that and parses that, what does it get when it parses it into ints? So I click that, and I see, wait a minute, the times are all 0. The values look legit, but the times are 0. Um, okay, let's deselect that and look at the final doubles. It converts this into doubles. Um, again, the times are wrong. The, the voltage values look legit, but the times are wrong. So this having this very simple code that allows you to look at the data in the various phases just by checking a box is extremely useful. And it turns out that we can see that this parsing is not working for the time values. So now we can say, hey, wait a minute, why isn't this parsing working? So let's go into the parsing code and see what's going on. So as you recall from the previous video, we set it up so every time the Arduino sends data into our serial port, we get a data received event handler and uh, it notifies us to come to this event handler and process the input data. So what we've done is we have just read a line from the uh, serial port and named it as input data, and that's a string. And the string that we read should look something like this. It should be that big number that we were seeing with a comma and then a sample value between 0 and 1023 with some carriage return and line feeds. Okay. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take this string that we read in, um, this input data string, and we're going to feed it to this method called parse CSV logger. We input this data string, and it should come out with two samples in a, a two-element array, which is an integer time and an integer uh, sample value as integers. So there should be a two-element array. So apparently that's not working. So why is it not working? Well, we can go into the parse CSV logger method, and you can see that it takes in the string, and it should send out an integer array. And again, the input string should look like this. Well, the first thing we do is we trim off the carriage return and line feed, so it should be just um, these two numbers separated by a comma, and then we're going to split those two numbers um, based on the um, comma and put it into a two-element array. So now sub-0 should be this long number, which is a string, which is the time value, the microseconds, and sub-1 should be a string with the whatever the sample value is. So now I am um, basically initializing a new integer array, because I'm going to convert these string values into a um, two-element integer array, and I'm going to call it vals, and I go down here, and all I'm doing is I am doing triparse for each element to um, try and extract the element from the string array and output it into an integer, into the integer array. array. So it looks like this, which is the sample value element, is working fine because it's returning a good value. What's not working is this right here. It's trying to parse the time value, but it's just coming out with a zero. So now we know there is something definitely wrong with this triparse. It's not parsing. So that is a really good way to um, find out very quickly where your problems lie. If you, you output in each step of the of the process where your um, what your values are so you can analyze them later. So now it turns out in this particular example the problem was that the value, the time value that's being sent from the Arduino is a long, unsigned long value. We're treating it as an int, okay, which is a signed value. So it's after a certain amount of time, in other words, the, micro, the microsecond value gets up above a value that the int can handle. After that time, suddenly the int triparse isn't going to work anymore because it's trying to parse this huge number that, that overflows the size of an int. So 
why we're getting those zeros is it's trying to parse uh, what is actually an unsigned int into an int and it's not working. So it was very helpful in finding out and it turns out um, that int try parse will only work for the, about the first 35 minutes after you start the Arduino. Very interesting. That's the time at which the microsecond value is way beyond what the int can handle. So now we know we have to go back and change all those ints dealing with those time values to unsigned ints. So that very simple um, methodology of outputting to the text box helped us focus on this one try parse method that wasn't working. So basically the way I implemented this, um, we've got one text box and we've got three checkboxes. I just have three simple if statements where if checkbox one is checked, um, I go through the code. Remember we had um, we had to get on the right thread, but I did text serial data dot append text. Uh, in the first case, I just take the input data, which is the input string. If the other one's checked, I take the sample data. And if the third box is checked, I take the um, values that are supposed to go to the chart. These are the uh, double values with the actual times and um, sample values. So really pretty straightforward and very simple to do. Um, it's a lot of it's just copying and pasting and that way you can get some very quick and easy feedback on what's going on in your code. Okay, now earlier in this video, I said the number one most important um, best practice in my view is to never trust your data. Check it every step of the way. While that's true, that's not the number one. Actually, the number one is to plan your project. Step by step, plan how you're going to do it. Have things like simple inputs and outputs. What's the input? What's the expected output? So, you know, make little block diagrams of the entire process like I've got here. You don't have to get fancy. You can just write it out on a piece of paper in a text editor. Just type out the steps. What's the input? What's the expected output? And that is really by far the most important thing. You've got to figure out what data you're going to get in and you've got to figure out what you're expecting out because you can't debug and check things if you don't know what you're expecting going in and going out. So here's an example um, I've got with our CSV logger. Um, you know, I typed out a comment. The input string should look like this. And then I know somewhere in here, I'm going to have to deal with it this way. And then the output of this set of steps should look like this and this. So it's, it's really important that you write those steps out before you start coding, plan it out, and um, that will help immensely in the debugging process. Okay, so I think that's about it for this one. Uh, my two big recommendations are, of course, to don't trust your data. You know, check it, check the input, check the output, print it out like we're doing here, and actually see what you're dealing with so that you can uh, verify that it's all uh, what you expect. And then also plan out your application. Don't just start writing code, blend it out. So anyway, I hope that all helps. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.